Now I know why you can sing that high. <laughs> Have you ever been in a harness like I've that? I've been in a harness once before, and I promised I would never do it again, but just for you, I did it. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. And there was a lot of pressure on the asteroids, I have to say. <laughs> the song you're going to be singing tonight is going to be in a different octave, a, a higher key. Like, well, why does gentlemen sting? Give it up. Uh, I want to mention, by the way, uh, you, you kind of wrote that sketch a little bit. I did. Yeah. Well, we, we, well, we said, well, in a lot of ways. But no, I'm not taking the full blame for it. No. <laughs> but we, Arthur, Arthur Meyer, our, our writer on our show, and uh, Colin Elsie wrote the sketch, uh, Two Stings on the Moon. We send it to you. We go, I don't know if Sting will do it. He probably won't do it. We don't know. And we didn't hear back from you. <laughs> so I go, all right, so it's okay. Then we heard back from uh, your publicist and they said, Sting likes the idea a little bit, but he's got. <laughs> He's got some things he wants to tweak, and then, like, in the next hour, we got a scratch track of you singing that. Yeah. To Walking on the Moon. To yeah. Walking on the Moon, yeah. And I go, no, we start, we start crying. Dude, it was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Uh, have you, uh, I, I thought about this, because I was like, either wear astronauts, or you could just wear uh, your space underwear from the movie Dune. Yep. And then uh, I thought, well... I, I, still, I still have these. <laughs> you do. And... Occasionally, Judy asked me to wear them for, you know, <laughs> wants to spice it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she does not. Uh, it's very difficult to get your trousers on over them. This is legendary, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, walking on the moon, you, you were saying backstage was actually wasn't walking on the moon. It was about no. a long night out in Germany. No, I had a bass line in, in my head, but da -da 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 -da. and it kept going round and round in my head, and it was about three in the morning, and we were in Munich, I think, and we'd had a lot of beer. And I thought, there must be a song here. So I was walking around the room going, walking around the room, wow. da -da -da. and I thought, that can't be a song. So it became walking on the moon, inspired by Neil Armstrong, of course, the great hero. Uh, let's talk about my songs. Uh, congrats on this. Uh, this is like, uh, basically it's like your greatest hits, kind of, but more, but it's different versions of them. You know, I think some people imagine that recorded work is a, a holy relic or a museum piece. For me, it's just the starting point in the relationship. You get, to, you get to know a song over the years of singing it. So I, I've been singing these songs for 30 years, some, some of them. I know where the bodies are buried. I know, you know, every night I, I sing them and I try and find something different. So when I approach it again in the studio, I have all of that knowledge. My voice is different. Yeah. It's, it's richer. Yeah. You know, with the way drums are recorded now is so different to the way it was in the 70s or the 80s. So it's, it's, a, diff it's a fun record. Yeah. But it, it's fun to compare the two. Uh, I love it. I love uh, Brand New Day. God, I love every one of these songs. Desert Rose, If You Love Somebody, Set Them Free, which I heard is written, was written in a haunted house. Is that true? Uh, I lived in a haunted house in North London uh, for a very long time. This is really true? I, I never believed in ghosts. I was very skeptical about it until I lived, lived with them. Yeah. <laughs> So it was numerous yeah. girls? Yeah. You, you would wake up in the morning and everything had been reorganized in the kitchen. Furniture was a different place. Bottles were smashed. Plates were smashed on the floor. And one night I woke up and I, I saw Trudy standing in the corner with our child. And I was wondering why she was staring at me. And then I reached over and there was Trudy. And then she went, who's that? And we both saw this woman and a child in the corner of the room. Then we found out the, it used to be a pub called the Three Ducks in the 17th century. And I don't know what happened there, but it was a very, very weird atmosphere. And then when I sold the house, it kept being resold every few months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you want to be uh, yeah, like, uh, there's something in there, yeah. We, I, I liked the ghosts. I, I, I enjoyed their company, but I, yeah. you know, I was very skeptical about it. But Did, uh, you, t did you talk to the ghosts? No, say no, I was too scared. Too scared. <laughs> If I ever feel a ghostly presence, which I do sometimes, oh, yeah. I'm feel, no, I, that was real. I am, I'm really here. Uh, I hope that you're really here. Uh, and uh, I just imagine all my guests are sting. That's how I interview everybody. Uh, but I, I always say, uh, hey, I'm cool. Or hey, I'm good with you guys. You do whatever. Just smile. Me. Just smile. Right? Just smile, smile at him and go, yeah, have fun. It's your place. <laughs> right? You can't have an old English house without a ghost. You can't. That's a rule. That is true. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the Las Vegas residency. I'm uh, excited beyond belief. Me too. I cannot wait.
I've played Vegas wow. many, many hundreds of times, but yeah. I've never had my own room before. This will be my own room. Wow. The only limit is my imagination. So I'm going to have a different gown every song. Yeah, of course, yeah. Because when I think of Vegas, I think of you, you change, costume changes, dancers. Magicians, dancers, <laughs> yeah. uh, Right now, do you have a plan for what you're going to do on the stage? It's going to be a big show. It I is. mean, it's, we have a year to plan it. But, wow. but tickets go on sale next week, so you can start planning your trip to Vegas to go see Sting. I am going to be there. I cannot wait, dude. Oh my gosh, we could totally re we could reprise our roles as two Sting's on the moon. Yeah, whenever you want. Whenever you want, I'm totally yeah. available. All right. He basically said yes. I'm so excited. Uh, what? Uh, uh, I'm just going to name some other ones that's on my songs, uh, just so everyone knows. Message in a Bottle, Walking on the Moon, Englishman, Englishman in New York. Come on! <sighs> what, uh, you're doing Demolition Man tonight. We are going to play Demolition Man. And that's a rock, man. That's it. Which I originally wrote for, for Grace Jones. You originally wrote that for Grace Jones? I wrote it Jones. for Grace. I, I was at some thing with her, and it's got to be me. It was like midnight or something like that. I, or we're somewhere. Maybe we were here. And I said, uh, all right, take care. She's like, uh, what are you doing now? And I go, I'm going to sleep. I'm an old man. She's like, what's wrong with this generation? <laughs> I'm going out. She I'm going out right now. She, she knows how to party. She's the greatest. And you know how to party. Thank you for being here. And Great. get ready for Demolition Man. The legendary Sting, everybody!